Howdy do, folks. This here is old mountain man talking at you from the backside of this here lake in the hills of Arkansas. Well, I got to thinking, now that it's springtime and well, I got a nice day, might as well just go ahead and shoot another video. I know I said in that video I uploaded here about three or four days ago that I don't really like shooting videos, don't want to, or what have you, but yeah, that's not necessarily true. Uh, if uh, you know the weather had had me down, and the sun wasn't shining, when the sun ain't shining, I'm just, just uh, this kind of does something to me. It's springtime, you know, I know it's supposed to be raining, that's all part of the, the natural order of things and such, but damn here this last rain we had 10 inches of rain now I know that my viewers out in California are just gonna be saying what the fuck you know and I get a lot of views from California for some reason I don't know folks in California seem to like my channel like my videos well how did all y'all folks out there in California Oh, goodness. Uh, uh, besides the weather, you know, being crappy for the most part. And uh, and we only had like, I don't know, two, three, four nice days in the past two weeks. And then work got in the way out here in the yard and in the garden. And you know, speaking of garden, I had... Uh, mentioned growing my own cotton in the last video so here's something I want to show you this is a cotton bowl that's what your cotton t-shirts and blue jeans and everything looks like before it's processed into a fabric and let's see what the cotton husk looks like that's what the cotton husk looks like. I got these sharp little buggers out here on the end, and it is some tough stuff. Not exactly brittle, and that cotton husk is over a year old. And if it was going to be brittle, it's, yeah. And just think, with all them sharp little points there on the end, them little barbs, just think what uh, people that used to pick cotton by hand would go through in a day. You know, you had to. Do like I did, get that cotton out of there, get it out of there fast, get it in the cotton sack, and, you know, just keep going. Uh, and then the cotton was taken to the cotton gin to remove the seeds. But me, I don't have a cotton gin. So, you just pull the cotton away, best you can, but not all of it off that you can. Now you have a cotton seed. You get that little bugger kind of turned around there. Yeah. I counted a while ago and I've got spotty rows, you know, come, coming up. What I mean by spotty is I plant 30 seed and then maybe 15 will come up, 5 over here, 6 over here, 7 over there, blah, blah, blah. Eh, it's a pain in the ass. But, you know, been, I got this right here. This has already got the seed taken out of it. And why grow your own cotton? Hmm? Well, what do you think about what you use cotton for? I mean, cotton balls. You go buy a bag of cotton balls in the store. What are you using them for? Well, for the guys out there that own firearms and spend money on cleaning patches you can take some of this cotton and this goes for anything from a 22 on up to big bore rifles and pistols what have you take as big a piece of cotton as you need and you probably need to kind of gauge the bullet size to widen up a wad of cotton in your in your hand there and, and kind of comparing it to the board and whoop, daggle hitting the daggum 
stand again, talking with my hand. I was married to a half Italian, half Choctaw Indian woman once, and she talked with her hands, and sometimes that's, I don't know. The weirdest shit rubs off on us. Good God. And at any rate, cleaning fire. And what about wound dressing? Now, you don't want to put just plain cotton on a wound unless maybe you got petroleum jelly on there. And that's the, that would be like for maybe a burn or a large area to help drainage or whatever. Yeah. Take this cotton seed and put it back in this sack. I took a, a garlic bag. I do have some cotton here in this bag here. And I just, I don't know why, I just throwed it in on top of some garlic. And there was an old timer that said, well, you might be glad you did that, boy, because keeping that cotton around with them seed in it going to get bow weevils and that, that uh, might attract bow weevils. And bow weevils will eat the seed. They'll bore into the cotton bowl and eat the seed. So that garlic might just keep them away. Who knows? I hadn't seen any bow weevils yet. <laughs> but, uh, now, getting back to the cotton here. Wound dressing, you know, if you got a, say you're in a shithead to fan battle situation, somebody gets uh, shot in the leg. You get someone well versed in bullet extrication of bullets or extracting bullets or projectiles foreign debris from the body and there's a successful minor operation in getting that done they get shot in the leg they get shot in the hand the arm shoulders you know soft tissue wound nothing like an abdominal or chest cavity type situation which is that would be downright detrimental in a situation where there is no professional medical equipment and personnel around, such as in a hospital, a trauma ward, you know, trauma care unit. Let's say you got cotton, you got some basic antiseptics, anti-infectives, um, you got everything you need. You can patch somebody up pretty decent. And if you're lucky, you got antibiotics. Uh, ciprofloxin would be the most powerful that I know of. And the list goes on. But, yeah. It, uh, but then again, there's the whole thing with how antibiotics mess up the human body, you know, antibiotic, anti-life, you know, anti being, you know, against or in the negative sense. And then the biotic being, you know, for about the human body or life. Uh heck of a thing. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a brain in my head. I ain't some dumb fuck dipshit that spent his whole life out in the damn woods. Spent the better part of it out in the woods. But I've always been interested in medicine and science and, you know, and in recent years, technology. Yeah. Growing your own cotton. You got yourself wound dressing. I'm sure the ladies out there, they could think of all kinds of things they could do with raw, homegrown, organic cotton. And no, I don't put no pesticides on my garden. If the bugs get after it, then hell, I'll order up a bunch of ladybugs for the aphids, and I'll order up a bunch of praying mantis eggs and hatch them out and turn those praying mantises loose on the garden. And them are some wonderful insect soldiers. Praying mantis will eat any bug out there and they will not harm a human being. I don't care what the myth 
what you know what kind of myth there is you know when I was growing up well don't look at that bug too long he'll spit in your eyes I'm like what the fuck and so I purposely sat there and stared at that bug for a while to see if it spit my eyes and I'd turn around later on I told that person I said you know you're full of shit I sat there and stared at that bug and dared that motherfucker to spit in my eyes and he didn't do it I was a, there I just busted your little myth all to hell. So the next time somebody tell, tries to tell you something that sounds outrageous about a, a bug that's seemingly harmless, hell, do a little research online. Now, I didn't have any computer back then. I just got into computers in 2008. Actually, it was 2006 when I first went online. 2008 whenever I got on my got owned my first laptop and oh lord the things I've learned since then I have learned a lot I love learning you know learn all you can you know, don't be shy of knowledge knowledge will save your life they say ignorance is bliss I uh, no that's an old antiquated saying uh, it has to do with what you don't know can't hurt you or some damn thing like that or if you can't see it it can't hurt you well <laughs> what the fuck yeah I know all that sounds stupid it sounds stupid to the people with common sense anyway. but oh another thing that happened here the other day Yesterday evening, in fact, I'm sitting out here, sitting out here right there by the stove, kind of got my chair turned around this way here, and I'm feeding the little dog, Sassy 2, that y'all seen in the video, the update with the hailstorm and all, and sitting there feeding her a little bit of pig meat that I'm cooking yeah I'm nibbling on a little bit finally got past the pork allergy and the way I did that was I kept eating and eating and eating pork and suffering the allergy for about seven eight days and got past it Ta -da. <coughs> I don't recommend anybody else do that unless you've got some hair on your ass unless you can take some pain and suffering because I did no complaints. That's just what happened. At any rate, back to what happened here yesterday. Was feeding the dog some of the pork. And all of a sudden her she just her head twitches and I I catch that movement. She jerks her head over that way and she's looking. Ears perked up. Then my eyes start shining a certain way. And she just gets this look about her when she sees a snake. A damn copperhead slithers right up behind me, and that is the second one I've killed in this area. Yeah, and y'all seen the, y'all might have seen the uh, cast iron cook. No, wait a minute, it was pan fried copperhead snake and coffee with the mountain man. <laughs> yeah, I skin it right there on camera. I killed it, and then five days later, I, I killed it on camera. Five days later, you know, I had to throw it in the freezer, and then five days later, when the weather cleared up, I had to, I cooked it, skin, I, no, I skin it, gut it, and cooked it, and damn, it gave me a headache, because I remember now that venomous reptiles, you know, they bite an animal, injecting that poison into them, uh, venom, not poison, poison, kill you know whatever you know sh there are so many pretentious assholes out there on the internet that'll argue with you you, know, you shouldn't you know, well a reptile is venomous it's not poisonous shut the fuck up it's the same goddamn thing venomous toxic toxins poisons it all damages the human body now 
I run across some super pretentious, geeky shitheads out there. I'm all for knowledge, but whenever you take it to the extreme and you start calling people names and shit like that, you know, hmm. I think people get bit by snakes. Sometimes they die, sometimes they don't. I seen a man that got bit by a snake once. He worried himself to death, literally. Autopsy revealed that uh, he, it, oh, what the fuck was it? It was not the venom. They couldn't really determine the cause of death. He just worried himself to death. It's, you know, it's kind of like when somebody, if somebody was the, like them old curses and stuff. Um, I'll tell you, yeah, it's it's bad medicine whenever you worry. And when I say bad medicine, I mean that in Native American times. You know, everything is medicine to a Native American Indian, Apache, Cherokee, Choctaw, Chickasaw, Pawnee, whatever. It is good medicine or bad medicine. Evil medicine or beneficial medicine. <coughs> and it's physical medicine or spiritual medicine. Like these hair bone pipes around my neck, you know. The black ones are buffalo horn. The white ones are buffalo bones. And you got the bear claw. You know, they're talking about spiritual medicine. It's a spirit of the bear, you know. You do a bear. And then we got, oh hell, where's that other one at? There it is. There was a. Sweet little gal get bought me this here bear claw with the silver cap, and little turquoise stone some years ago. Same one that bought me this Navajo story ring. Hello, little bear. There he is. I was wondering when he was going to show up. <laughs> yeah, buddy. That, that, little, that little babe, that, that little Cajun babe that bought me that. Uh, my bear claw with a silver cap and the turquoise stone and the Navajo story ring. She's gotten married here recently. Not to me. <laughs> she wanted me to marry her once. But, yeah. She mentioned marriage and I got scared. <laughs> <coughs> Literally, I did. <clears throat> she was fun to be with for a while. Now, <clears throat> ah. 357 barrel digging into my hip bone. Oh, goodness gracious. Well, oh, as the garden progresses out there, I'll show y'all that I got some cotton sprouts coming up. And I'll do some videos on, uh, I mentioned uh, doing a flechette round test firing. Uh, a flechette round that I made up myself. And what a flechette is, a little steel dart. A lot of people know who what they are and a lot of people don't know what a flechette is. Yeah. But they're just basically uh, they will either kill or maim. And most of the time it's maim. You know, it'll hurt somebody bad enough where they'll need to go to the hospital. And that's your basic trespasser rounds on my property. Flechettes. Unless you want to go a step farther and put some copperhead poison on some of them. <laughs> I can come up with some wicked shit. I imagine some people out there can too, but we really don't need to be talking about that in the comments, no do. We? Well, people, we got uh, 19 minutes and 39 seconds up on the clock. And I've just jumped all over the place in this video like I generally do. 
if I don't have enough to talk about with the main subject, which was cotton, uh, then I'll just add more content as I go along. It's been a nice day. The squirrels ain't down the last three or four or five days the squirrels ain't bothered my corn plants anymore because I found a deterrent an alternative to killing them I took the remains after I cleaned the squirrels I put the meat in the freezer and took the remains which was the skin and the feet and the hides and put them out there in the garden on top of the ground you know just set them up in different places and that keeps them out in fact I've not seen a squirrel in the trees I've not seen a squirrel in the yard and that's a good thing you know my my corn is safe the squirrels are safe I'm gonna crack a shot with that 22 um, since 22 ammo is so high I got my old double barrel here that old stagecoach gun with Let's see. There they are. There's those notches. That came with the, those notches came with the shotgun. As you can probably tell, those are not fresh. But I'm thinking this is an, as I mentioned in the cast iron cooking and long guns with the mountain man. Uh, this is probably somebody's old stagecoach shotgun. You know, look at those hammers. Yeah, this one here kind of sets back a little bit. This one here sets way back from the from the firing pin but that don't stop it I had to take these plates out and uh, had to replace a few things here and there because you know with modern screws modern fasteners it didn't have the parts but I know the site where I can get the parts as I get the money but I'm thinking these notches are all uh, outlaws they got shot trying to rob a stagecoach this gun is old. Yeah. Way old. Way old. And this is one I test fired the flechette out of. I test fired it out of this left barrel over here. And I cleaned it. Gave it a good scrubbing. I looked down that barrel and I, there are no gouges, no scratches, no nothing. Right now we've got seven and a half shot, low brass. Yeah, you know, just general game load. And like I said, since you know, shotgun shells are cheaper than 22 ammo, yeah. Squirrel's gonna get a big old load of number seven and a half, which ain't real big. You know, triple lot is the biggest, and then you get into the outrageous, especially rounds, and then the common thing, the common big chunk is the 12 gauge slug and two and three quarter inch and three inch magnum. Yeah, but I love my guns. You know, that's like, you know, 12 gauge double barrel back here, Ruger Security 6, 357 magnum, and got the little Cobra Derringer 22 magnum. Yeah. When it comes to a pistol, I want a magnum. I don't want some something less. I don't want anything less than a magnum. This is a 44. I think standard 44 would be powerful. The 44 magnum. I don't know with this. With my build, I think maybe uh, no. <laughs> Yes. Then again, I seen Baby Blue on the town. She, uh, she was out there firing a Smith and Wesson 500 Magnum, but I don't know. She works out a lot. I don't, and I'm an old man. Well, not that old. 47 going on 18. By God, I'm gonna live forever. Damn right I am. After all I've been through in my lifetime, you damn right I'm gonna live forever. I got a right, I got the privilege. 
You know, there's been times whenever people thought I was dead, literally being right there in front of them, laid out. I couldn't feel a heartbeat, nothing like that shit. Uh, it was, yeah. And after the experiences, I sat around with a thousand yard stare in my eyes there for a while. Just, ugh, fucked up. You can't imitate that. You know. Well, at any rate, folks, oh my god, almost 30 minutes now. 25 minutes and 33 seconds. Well, I'm going to get off of here. I got to get back to work. Hope y'all enjoy the video. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, tell me why. And I'll try to adjust the content. I don't know. <laughs> like I said, well, hell, it's just me and my life. If you don't like my life, don't like what I do, then you can unsubscribe. You can just go away. Because I'm not going to change for any damn body. Thank you very much. But at any rate, y'all have a good one. As Gear, Gear Gridden said, y'all have a good one. We'll talk to y'all later. Remember, folks, be kind to yourselves. Be kind to each other. And let's try to make this world a better place. Because one of these days, shit will hit the fan. And you never know who you might meet. I need this old boy around here. Y'all take care. And we'll see y'all a little bit later here on the YouTube. Adios from now. From the backside of this here lake. This is my man signing off.